Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to give you a sneak peek at a brand new c -sharp 11 feature coming with .NET 7 in November called Rostering Literals. And it is an amazing feature that I am so happy they're adding because it will solve my actual day-to-day -day problems. It's something I will definitely use from day one. I have .NET 7 Preview installed so we can actually play around with it and see how it works. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. So let me show you what the problem is and how this new feature is solving it. So let's say I have some text and I want to print that text or do anything with that text. I'm just going to print it so I can actually visualize the string value behind the scenes. And then I'm going to start with this nice JSON blob. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to say, okay, I have some JSON. I want to put it in a string so I can print it. How would you do that? Well, some might say I'm going to paste it here and because I'm using Rider, I have an automatic formatting option to add the new line and the escape of the double quotes automatically. But now I can't just go ahead and copy it and like paste it back to its raw JSON form or like reuse it anywhere else. Now I'm stuck with this new format. Now, if I don't do that, the alternative would be that I double quote everything and I start string concatenating and escaping and blah, blah, blah. And this is still not going to work nicely because then you're copying all these new double quotes, all these new escapes and all these new uh, plus symbols. So that's not really an option either. Now, the other thing we can do is turn this into a verbatim string. So if I add the add symbol, then I don't have to worry about this. All I need to do is add double quotes like this everywhere. It will take a while with big objects, but what can you do? And once I do that, then I can run it and you can see that the string I'm getting back is exactly what I want. Only I don't have the padding that I had here, you know, the four spaces over here. So that's not great if I want it formatted properly. But what I can do is I can just stick that here. And now if I do that, then that's fine. However, now I'm stuck with these double quotes over here that I don't really want to have. Because again, if I copy that and use it somewhere else, I have to manually remove all those double quotes. Plus, the formatting looks a bit odd like it looks like a java method because the new bracket starts here and all that and yeah i could technically do this and have it nicely formatted and look like something i would like to see however if i run this this just added all that padding over here so it doesn't really do what i want this is a very common problem because of how prevalent json is and there's no doubt in my mind that json was one of the biggest driving forces behind this change and if I want to take it a step further and let's say that I want to have parameters in there. So I want to have, let's say, first name equals Nick and I want to use Nick in there. Then I have to add this here, then to add double curly braces here to escape them and then add the dollar sign over here for interpolation. And yeah, this will work. But then again, you have all this padding, but like, wow, this is a lot. Would it be nice if it was way, way simpler and I could just paste the string as it is, this thing over here, and this just worked. Well, that's the problem we're getting solved. That's what we're getting. So let's see how that would work. I'm going to go back and comment all of this out. And just so the errors are not distracting in Rider, I'm going to go to VS Code and I'm going to do it here. So this is the exact same code. And for those wondering, this is the preview that I am currently on. You can download that and you can play around with it too. So how easy it is? Well, it might look a bit weird in the beginning, but please follow with me. So let's say I have nothing. First, I'm going to have three double quotes. And then in these three double quotes, I can have anything I want. And as long as I close them with three double quotes, the same number that I started with minimum of three, then this is valid C sharp and it will print the text. So a minimum of three double quotes is what allows us to get into the raw string literal mode effectively. And now what this means is that if I have, let's say, double quote here, double quote here, double quote here, then if I save that and I go ahead and I run it, I don't need to escape anything. These are just treated as raw strings. There's nothing to escape here. Like if I am to add a backslash, um, ignore the formatting, this will actually just count the backslash. If I have like a backslash R backslash N, which is for return, basically, 
then this will also be printed in its raw form. And that's what this feature allows us to do. Now, let's see how this helps us with the JSON thing. Now, if I delete that, the most common way you're going to use this feature is in this way. You're going to do enter here and you want a double quote set that opens it to be aligned with a double quote set that closes it. The reason for that is that if I add some text in here now, then any space here and any space here won't actually be accounted for. So if I just do .NET run, I'm just going to get that one single line. So no padding beforehand, no padding here, if any, no padding from the new line here and no padding from the new line here, just the raw string here, which means that if I now go ahead and I copy that JSON string and I paste it and I properly format it as I'd want to, you know, it's a JSON string in a string, right? And I don't escape anything and I do a .NET run, then voila, you're getting the proper formatting. Now, the reason why this doesn't like it is because its tabs and tabs are not represented nicely in the terminal. Uh, but if I save it with like four spaces, uh, then as you can see, uh, it's exactly represented as I'm seeing it right here. So that's great. It is solving that great problem. And if I want to copy it, I'm just taking it from here, pasting it somewhere else. I don't need to escape anything. So that is the main thing it's solving. So that is awesome. I'm actually going to be using that day one to change a lot of strings that are either verbatim or escaped, which are just ugly in my code. This is just way more clear. Now, a few things. If you mess up the alignment, so if you're even a character below where this opens and you try to .NET run, this will not work. It's not accepted. It's not valid syntax. Um, if you go and do that with the closing one, then this will also not work. So that's not great. So keep in mind that these kind of need to be aligned for this to work. And of course, this does not stop here. If you want to have XML, you can have XML. The whole escaping will work the same way. Now, two things. What happens when you have a parameter that you want to have in here, for example? So the same example, var first name equals Nick. How can I have Nick as a parameter here? Well, it's actually pretty simple. First, as you would think, you need to use the actual interpolation, but you need double curly braces here. If I was just going ahead and doing this and then just slapping a string interpolation symbol and I did the .NET run, this will not work. If I add two of them and I do a .NET run, it will still not work because this now needs two dollar sign symbols and this will now work. I know this might be a bit confusing, but uh, wait till you see this one. So what happens if, let's say, some parameter, for example, I have uh, a parameter called uh, favorite character sequence, and this is just what's Nick's favorite character sequence. And that character sequence is one, two, three, four uh, double quotes. So I really like to see four double quotes in a row, but then I also have starting uh, double quotes here. How do I escape this? Well, the way to escape this is to say how many sequential characters of double quotes do I have as a maximum in that row string literal? Well, it is one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, if it's six, I'm going to copy that and do six here and six here and then add an extra one. So seven. It needs to be at least one more than whatever you have in here. Again, that's just for double quotes. And if we do that, then I can do dot and run and it works fine. Assuming that tab is represented correctly. And then, yeah, I can have all these sequential uh, double quotes without having to escape anything as long as the amount of quotes I use to open the string literal is one more than the max amount of sequential double quotes in the blob. I know it can be a bit confusing, but look, this is just here. So nobody complains that, hey, I have three sequential quotes in my blob and it opens blobs all over the place. So why don't you just make it flexible? Well, that's how they made it flexible. Or like, for example, what if I have a syntax like this where, yeah, like my last name is open carry brace, open carry brace, and then close, close. If I do that, then we'll say you're missing a parameter here. What are you doing? So this is where the double dollar sign comes in. If you want to have a parameter, you can add an extra one here and then an extra one here and then do a .NET run. And this will now work. Well, it basically says how many sequential open curly braces do you have or closed curly braces in your code that you want to represent as a literal? Well, here it's two. Well, okay, then to represent your string interpolation thing, you need the amount you want to escape plus one, so three. And then that three has to be equals to whatever amount of dollar signs you use to open interpolation. And this can keep going. You can have four here and you can have 
four here and this will work fine. It's just built basically in a file proof way, which doesn't necessarily look nice when those things are used, but I don't really think they will be used. So you don't have to worry about them. I know that there's maybe a lot to take in because I like to show the edge cases too, but the fundamentals of just, I slap this JSON blob over here. I don't need this string tabulation. Three parameters to open, three parameters to close, and then paste this properly intended exactly as you would do with a JSON object and then be able to do .NET run and it just works. That's an absolute win for me and I'm so gonna use this. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this feature and how maybe you would change it differently. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you wanna support me as well, you're gonna find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe, forget to like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.